Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the 8th grade concept of real number systems, specifically how we can visualize them, and we will do it in 5 minutes or less. So we've been looking at number systems from multiple grade levels. We've been visualizing them since the 5th and 6th grade. We're going to expand our previous knowledge, and we'll start with what we know as our most basic number system. So these are... Um, sometimes called counting numbers, sometimes called natural numbers. But if we're looking at what's our smallest subsystem of numbers, it's how we teach kids uh, to count, right? So one, two, three, four, and then so on. That's our smallest number system. So I'm going to make a Venn diagram here with, we've got, it normally would be circles, but I'm going to make little squares or rectangles inside others. So our next system it's going to blow your mind. Whole numbers. And it includes, obviously, all natural counting numbers because of the way our visualization works here, right? We've got everything that's within the uh, counting natural is automatically within the whole number simply because it's a box within a box. Whole number is only different because it includes one extra digit. Yeah, that's it, zero. It includes zero. And then it goes to one, two, three, four, so on. But when we teach kids to count, we don't start with zero. We start with one. So next would be integers. All right, so our integers here include negative. Now they're whole numbers, right? No decimals yet. But we're getting into negatives now. Negative four, negative three, negative two, negative one, zero. 1, let's make that a regular 1, sorry, 2, 3, so on and so forth. It extends into infinity both ways, but we're just dealing with whole numbers. Negative and positive, we call them integers. So what we're used to dealing with here on the outside most is what we call rational numbers. We're going to pause here for a moment. This is really what we started looking at in seventh grade. So rational numbers has that word ratio in the beginning. And an easy way to remember what a rational number is is to think of that word ratio because most of us associate ratios with fractions. So rational numbers, any number that can be uh, given as a ratio or a fraction, right? So obviously all integers all whole numbers, all natural numbers, anything like that can be given as a fraction because if you want to show negative 4 as a fraction, you just say negative 4 over 1. But now we can get into decimals. So we can do 1.23 because that can be uh, 1 and 23 over 100 or 123 over 100, right? You can get into uh, negative numbers as well, negative fractions, negative 4 fifths, right? Anything that can be shown as a fraction. You can even do some square roots as long as it resolves into a uh, something that can be given as a fraction. So the square root of 16 is going to be 4. We can represent that as 4 over 1. So those are as far as we get. Now there's another subset that exists completely outside of this and that's why I wanted to frame what we're doing in this video compared to what we already know. Those are the rational numbers. That's the biggest subset of numbers we've dealt with. But in eighth grade, we start dealing with irrational numbers. So that ir prefix is just going to mean numbers that you cannot show as a ratio. So they cannot be shown as a fraction. So one that we've become familiar with already, but we might not know is irrational, is pi, right? Because we say pi is about 3.14. 1, 5, but it goes on and on and on and on and on. It never stops. Pi never ceases. If you divide a uh, that ratio there of that circumference by the diameter of any circle, it's never going to stop. We also have some square roots. So if you find the square root of 2, you might want to try to find the square root of 5. It will never, ever stop. So those numbers that don't ever resolve, those are called irrational numbers, and they exist outside of the rational number system.